we got some very unexpected news today and we just have to get straight on into it. I'm not even going to ramble. You guys need to know about this and this was actually a couple hours ago. So I'm a little late, but I wasn't expecting this. I already posted for today. So The Sims tweeted about three hours ago when I'm filming this, Simmers, we have so much to share about the future of The Sims, an upcoming 25th birthday celebration, a film, creator kits, and The Sims creator program, and so much more. The future is Plumbob Green Read More. We had heard about a few of these things, so we, well, maybe you didn't know, but the 25th Sims anniversary is coming up. If you guys haven't been playing since the beginning, yeah, this game is about to be 25 years old. But we had no idea about creator kits. We did hear all those rumors about a movie coming out for The Sims, but they've officially confirmed it. So the future is Plum Bob Green. We're building what's next for The Sims and we want you to join us. So this is pretty long. I'm not, I already read through this entire thing. A lot of confirmation in here of things we've been wondering about and then a couple things where I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, if you want to read through this whole thing, I will link it down below. I'm going to be pinpointing the important parts, so get ready to party like it's the year 2000. So they kind of talk about how it's been nearly 25 years since the world has first introduced The Sims and there's more than 500 million of us who have become Simmers. That is crazy. So then it mentions here just some stats. We remain committed as ever to reimagining the way people play with life and giving millions the chance to connect over their shared love of The Sims. As we push boundaries of reality, so far in 2024, Simmers have spent more than 1.2 billion hours playing The Sims 4, 759 million hours spent in, in live mode. 303 million hours in build mode. Customizing your Sims, 640 million Sims, 65 million babies made. So clearly there is still an insane amount of people playing this game. And you know, some people feel like, oh, I don't really get it. Like a lot of things die fast now. You know, when new packs come out, the hype dies really fast. But I think what it is, The Sims 4, First of all, the base game is free. So that's bringing in a lot of new players. But also when a game becomes so old, there's a lot of people who are attached to it and they still play, but you know, they kind of just play on their own. Like there's a whole other group of players world of players, I should I should say, with these numbers, who don't even, you know, participate in the Sims community online, who don't even watch Sims videos. You know what I mean? And when it comes to Sims content, there is so many Simmers out there now. It's, you know, it's too much to keep up with. So a lot of things kind of factor in if numbers seem to be going down, but in reality, they are very high. So there is going to be a new episode of Behind the Sims in January 2025, which is very exciting because usually the Behind the Sims, we find out some exciting information, which I, I think we're going to this time just based on what they're talking about. The Hollywood rumors are true. This whole movies rumor is true, you guys. We're very excited to share that in partnership with Amazon MGM Studios, our team is working on a film based on The Sims. So Kate Heron will actually direct, but they can't really tell us much now. It's too early to share more about the movie, but stay tuned for updates as we mark our 25th birthday next year. So I guess we're going to be finding out more next year. So then they have this next paragraph, which I'm not going to read all the way through, but I was like, what are they about to announce here? Because it says you make the Sims. And it just kind of talks about all the Sims for creations, 116 million pieces of content uploaded. It says here, allow us to proudly introduce the Sims 4 creator kits designed and produced entirely by creators in collaboration with The Sims. When I first read this, I was like, <laughs> another type of pack. We're going to expand now more on kits. I was very nervous when I read this because I feel like the community is going to be like, what? <laughs> A lot of people get upset about kits. So now they're going to also have creator kits. We're going to have Sims 4 kits and now we're going to have Sims 4 creator kits as well. And I just feel like the Sims 4 is drowning in all these kits, but they're getting better. And so I'm not against this idea. I'm just really hoping it's going to go well. So this is going to be a little bit different. From what I'm understanding here, it's going to be kind of similar to the collaborations we see where the Sims work with other creators. Like they just worked with Sixum CC for the nursery kit coming and they've worked with a handful of other Simmers, even YouTubers. So I'm sure they see how well that goes, right? And I feel like like those kits are always the better kits. And so with this, it says here, these creator kits will mark the first time that a 
full collection of in-game assets have been crafted by a creator and officially published by the Sims development team, making them available for all players. From what I understand with the collaborations with the existing kits, you know, they kind of help work on them with the Sims team, you know, they talk back and forth. It's not just all created by the person they collaborated with. It's a collab, you know, but this is going to be entirely created by the creator. I think this could go over well. I just don't know how people are going to feel about the fact that they're introducing this new line of kits when there's already so many kits that come out. But I think they are going to be so much better than the kits we have. And I already feel like the kits we get are getting better. So maybe it'll be a good thing. Then next up, they talk about the Sims creator program, how we're collaborating with global creators. I'm not going to talk about this too much because there was some stuff about it recently. And I feel like we all know what this is. So I'm a part of this program. So, you know, the things you see me do on my channel and many other creators, you know, they post early access content things like that, you know, the whole creator codes, all of that is because of the creator program. It does kind of say here, including early access to upcoming packs, direct communication with fellow creators, the Sims team, free swag, opportunities to collaborate, and more. So basically, it looks like they're going to be accepting more people, so you can apply and see if you get accepted if you are a creator of some sort. So now they're mentioning the Sims Labs again. So we know the Sims Labs is all about like playtesting, right? We talked about this before. If you don't know, this is something that they announced recently. But hold on, <laughs> this is the exciting part to me anyways. They're talking a little bit more about it. Through The Sims Labs, we'll explore new experimental ways to play The Sims. Over the next few months, you might start to see The Sims Labs show up when we're trying out different things for Sims products systems, and features. This is your friendly reminder to sign up for a chance to play test in The Sims Labs here. So you can sign up if you're watching this video, and if you fit the requirements we're looking for, you will receive an email with further instructions. In the meantime, here's a sneak peek at some of what we'll be testing coming up soon. I saw this, and at first, I thought they were just going to show us like pictures of an upcoming Sims pack, but I'm like, oh my god, it's Project Renee. At least I'm pretty damn sure, because they're not stating, but this looks like Project Renee. We've seen a little bit of it, and this, yeah, like it has to be, which they do talk more about that too. So of course this is all pre-alpha and it's going to look different at release. But can I just say for this being pre-alpha, I like how they look. They look different. You can see like, I feel like even the build of them just looks very different compared to the Sims 4. Yeah, they're just built very differently. We have birds here. There's food that they're eating. Look at her hair and these thought bubbles. I'm really excited to see what this is going to look like when it's completely polished because this is so early. And so I'm just wondering, Wondering. Okay, so then we have the Sims franchise live and future product updates. So here they're kind of talking about how, you know, we're expanding the franchise to better serve the diverse needs of the growing community. They're focused on creating a variety of games, which we've seen they're bringing back the My Sims, which they do mention below. We'll get into that. So they're going to focus on different categories across simulated life genre, including cozy games, social, collaborative, based gameplay, mobile, narrative games. Mobile narrative games, I think they're mentioning something new, like a story mobile game. I'm for that. <laughs> because <laughs> I don't really play the other ones, and continue depth improvements and modernization of The Sims 4, which will continue to be the foundational Sims experience. Keep that in mind, foundational Sims experience. I'm just going to say it right now, The Sims 5 is not coming. So we're going to get into that. So it says here they're creating a new experience that connect players on their terms wherever they are and however they choose to play. These explorations are being tested via The Sims Labs, including individual features from Project Renee, a story-driven mobile test, enhancements to The Sims 4 with discovery and search tools, creator tools, and more. So apparently the whole multiplayer thing is for this game, Project Renee, which we already know it's going to have multiplayer. But yeah, a story-driven mobile test. What do you guys think about that? So I'm not going to talk about this much. We know we are getting the My Sims Cozy Bundle, which is going to include My Sims and My Sims Kingdom over on the Nintendo Switch, which is coming November. And of course, there's going to be touchscreen support and all of that. Okay, so then we have Project Renee expanding the ways to play in The Sims. So there is going to be another playtest in this fall 2024. This is soon, you guys. So here's what I was saying. An early look at multiplayer experience that explores joining friends and other players at a shared location. So you can sign up for that if you want to be the first to experience that. And it's just going to be like a playtest. I'm guessing you're not going to be able to share anything or anything like that. And you're going to have, you know,
know, something to sign. So then they also mentioned The Sims 4 testing new features as we invest in improvements and modernization efforts. So in May 2024, they did announce that they assembled a team to invest in core game experience, including tackling technical issues. Supposedly, they've invested further into these efforts to focus on previous reported issues, quality and assurance, and game optimization for future releases. So let's cross our fingers. Batches of fixes will continue to be released roughly every two months until further notice. Good, because this game is broken. <laughs> I, I'm actually able to play pretty well recently, but I know a lot of people can't. So on September 18th, which is literally tomorrow, our players can expect another major release of fixes alongside an exciting base game update. So that's tomorrow, you guys. Okay, so I'll definitely be doing a video on that. And then they mentioned the new Reapers event. So they announced this whole Reapers rewards event. So you guys are probably familiar with the Happy at Home event that they did. It looks like you'll actually have the chance to play a alongside Grimm himself. I wasn't expecting that. And then of course, as expected, you can earn exclusive new rewards on September 24th, which is just around the corner. So hopefully you guys are excited about that. I'm excited about this part, being able to play alongside Grimm himself. And then the Sims free play. I'm not really going to go over this. I'm not very interested in it, but basically if you do play, there's going to be a new region inspired by Mountainside. So that town is going to be coming soon. Now that we've kind of taken in all that, there's a little more. Okay. So there's some tweets. This is by Jack of All Games. And it says here, nothing I haven't said before, but now it's out there. There's no fifth Sims game. Four will remain the main game. Renee is designed to be an alternative experience. Four will be the foundational one. Glad they finally clarified. The Sims 4, which will continue to be a foundational Sims experience. There is more on this. Someone did actually reply here. So Michael says, no insider info here. I haven't worked there in a decade, but you can bet your ass there will be a Sims 5. When I was working on Sims 4, people would ask me what I was doing. I would say I worked on Sims 1, Sims 2, Sims 3, but I can't tell you what I'm working on now. So this was before the Sims 4 was ever announced. So he believes that there will be a Sims 5. And I'm going to tell you guys right now, I know they're saying there's not, but I think there will be one day. I just think it's going to be long, long away basically. So basically, Jack of All Games says here, they basically made a public statement that a fifth game isn't coming for a very long time, if ever. So here are these screenshots here. It says EA's vice president and general manager of the Sims franchise, Kate Gorman, told Variety the main reason behind this decision to not publish a fifth edition of the game was the concern players would have to start all over again after decades worth of gameplay in this existing Sims 4. So I, I don't like like this take, I'm going to be honest. So many people say this and I'm going to be straight up honest. I do not believe that we have to start over when a new game comes out. I never understand that. I see a lot of people say it. And if that actually kind of sucks, if that's a main reason that they've decided to like put a halt on The Sims 5 or like not create it at all. I'm just like, what? Because people still play The Sims 2. But I will say like, I get a lot of comments saying people don't want The Sims 5 because they don't want to start over and they've already like done all this with The Sims 4. But I just never understand that mindset. When you actually think about it, I mean, new games come out all the time. Do you feel like you have to ditch your other game? Because you know what I mean? I don't understand it. Like if you've spent lots of money on The Sims 4 and you enjoy it, keep playing it. You don't even have to get The Sims 5. I just, I don't know. It doesn't disappear from your library. If anything, it's better because The Sims 4 will hopefully stop being so broken. Because, you know, in, in a nice world, The Sims 4 would hopefully end off pretty well. Not all buggy, you know, which I have a little more hope for now because they want to come out with these bug fixes every couple months and they're looking more into that now. So it seems like they're actually taking it more seriously to fix these problems with The Sims 4. So if that's the case, you know, and they wrap it up, it should wrap up smoothly. And your game's not going anywhere. You could still play it 10 years from now. Like I said, like The Sims 2 is 20 years old and I just played it the other day. Some people don't even play The Sims 4. They still play The Sims 2 and 3. And so, yeah, there's like even a lot of channels out there that are strictly Sims 3 and they're just not interested in The Sims 4. They didn't feel the need to start over. Why? You know, they might own The Sims 4, but they likely don't own all the packs. That That's my take on it. I've never felt, even back when I wasn't in the creator network or anything, when The Sims 4 dropped, you know, if I still wanted to play The Sims 3, I'd go play The Sims 3. I never felt like 
I had to start all over again or anything like that. To me, it was just like a new game. If I want to purchase something, I will. If I don't want to, I won't. Like that's just kind of how I thought of it. I know you're starting with the base game and it doesn't have all this content, but I just never looked at it like that. I looked at it more as like, if I'm enjoying it, I'll purchase a pack that I want to. And if I still prefer the previous game, I'll go play that. And that's just the way I've always thought about it. But okay, moving on. The next one says here, the way we think about it is historically the Sims franchise started with the Sims 1 and then Sims 2, 3, and 4. And they were seen as replacements for the previous products, Gorman said. What we're really working with our community on is this new era of the Sims. We are not going to be working on replacements of previous projects. We are only going to be adding to our universe. With that, you'll see there are more ways to experience the Sims on different platforms, different ways to play, transmedia, and lots of great offerings within this universe. So absolutely, we're still continuing to support the Sims 4. More than ever, still continue to deliver expansion packs and updates and fixes. I do get that part. It is kind of known that, you know, a new Sims game comes out and it's seen as a replacement. But again, your other Sims games aren't disappearing. They still work. People even get The Sims 1 to still work. But I'm not totally against, you know, this new era of The Sims. I just kind of want to like, you know, stay positive and see how it goes, right? I'm definitely nervous about how Project Renee might end up, but maybe it's good that it's not going to be The Sims 5. I kind of already thought this. I talked about it before. Just the way they have been talking about it with it having multiplayer and with you being able to play on any platform, you know, you're going to be able to play on your phones, your iPads, you know, you're going to be able to do all that. And so I was just like, there's no way this is The Sims 5, you know, but we don't have a name. So, you know, we we're all just still saying that, but I think a lot of us had a feeling that maybe this is not The Sims 5 per se, you know? So I, I'm not really surprised at all by that, you know? I, and also they've been saying that it's going to be going alongside The Sims 4. So it's going to release when The Sims 4 is still coming out with content. And they don't do that, you know, if it's the next generation of the actual Sims. Well, actually take that back. It is the next generation of The Sims, but not in the traditional way with, with what we're used to, where it would be The Sims 5. They're just now expanding. They're going to be coming out with different games. I will say this gives me hope to see more spinoff games and stuff like that. And that I would be into. Okay. I want different Sims games to play. So you know what? I, this, this could be okay. I'm not going to take this as like a total disappointment yet. I just want to see what direction they go in and how things kind of fall into place. You know, it could be totally awful, but I don't want to sit there and be like so negative when I don't even know how this is going to feel. The changes with The Sims 4, Project Renee, we don't know how it's going to actually all feel when it's released. So I'm just going to wait and hope that it's good, but not be too hopeful so that I don't get disappointed. You know, that's kind of how I'm going to be until I learn more and actually, you know, play it myself. So that's kind of where I stand on that. But yeah, this is everything, you guys. If we have more Sims games to play other than just The Sims 4, I do like that idea. So anyways, you guys, I'm going to wrap this up here. I hope you all enjoyed it. I hope you guys are having an amazing day and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye guys.